Next up, I want to continue talking about for of. We'll see another example, and we'll also talk about situations when it doesn't help you, and you might actually prefer a standard for loop, even if it's longer and uglier. Here I have a simple two-dimensional array. It's representing a magic square. It's, uh, I don't know if you've seen them before. It's a square of numbers, a grid, where each row sums to some number, in this case, 15. So you can see all of them sum to 15. Each vertical, so each column, also sums to 15, and each diagonal sums to 15, if it's a correct magic square. Now, we're not going to write code to verify every single direction, but if I wanted to just sum each row and verify that they equal 15, using a for loop, a regular for loop, it's kind of annoying. Let i equals 0. I'm going to have to do a nested loop. i less than magic square dot length, and then i plus plus, and that's going to get me each row, one row at a time. So then I need to loop again to get those innards, each element in the row. And what I'd like to do is make a variable called row and just set it equal to magic square of i. So now row in this loop is going to refer to one of these nested arrays. And then I'll loop over row, so for let j equals zero, j less than row dot length j plus plus and then for each j we could start by just console dot logging j to make sure it works does it work okay so kind of <laughs> we're printing out the indices we need row of j and now we're getting those numbers but i want to sum them together three at a time each element or all elements in one of those rows i want to sum them together and print out ideally 15 so what I'm going to do is make another variable up top called sum. So not all the way up top, but each time through the loop, the outer loop, I want to reset it to zero because I'm looping over this, summing them together, but the next time this outer loop goes, it iterates, I want it to start again at zero so I can sum these up without having the previous sum in there as well. And then I would just do sum plus equals row of j and then after this inner loop, I could console.log sum. I'll probably do row added to, well, and I just add the whole row right there, summed to, and then dollar sign sum. Let's see what we get. 276, sum to 15, sum to 15. Okay, so this is okay with a regular for loop. But if we instead rewrote it using a for of loop, I think it's much cleaner. We would just do for let row of magic square. We'd still make our sum variable, let sum equals zero. And then for let, let's go with num element. I'll just go with num, I think that's fine, of row. So I don't have to make the second variable here. I don't have to use i or j, just for let row. I have access to row in here. Row refers to each individual nested array, each row. Then for let num of those rows, of each row, I'm going to sum plus equals num. And then I'll copy this line here, this console.log down below. I'll comment out that original one with the for loop, and we get the exact same output. But this is much cleaner and easier to see and understand. So that's an example where a for of really helps, and I also wanted to show a nested example. Now here's another example where it's actually not to your advantage to use for of. I have two arrays of strings, words one and words two. I want to loop over the first array, and for each element, I want to also print out the corresponding element from words two. So mailbox, milkshake, bathtub, and blackberry. Using a for, a traditional for loop is the way to go because I need to have an index. I need to know which number we're printing out or which index we're accessing in words one so I can do the same thing in words two. If instead I did a for of loop, I would have each value, male and milk, but I wouldn't have that number, that index, to access the corresponding value from words two. So I do want a regular for loop here. Let i equals zero i less than words one dot length i plus plus and then i'll just simply console.log 
words one of I, comma, words two of the same I. So I will be zero. Words one of zero, male, bo male. words two of zero, box. Let's test it out. Mailbox, milkshake, bathtub, blackberry. Technically, if I wanted that to be one word, I could use backticks, interpolate each one, do it again, maybe add a hyphen. I don't know if they're supposed to be hyphenated. We'll just do one word. Same thing here. Okay, so now we should just get one word. If we tried to do this with a for of loop, it would not be easy at all. We would have to use for of on this first loop and then work backwards to figure out what number, what index is male at, what index is milk at. We could do something like index of and then get that number and then take that number and plug it plug it into words too, which is just not ideal. So my point here is that for of is great a lot of the time. And it's really common just to need the data in an array or a string. But if you need to care about the index, the position, like we did here, then it's not going to work out for you. Or it won't be as easy as it would be to just generate those indices using a traditional for loop instead.